This is the Entitled AJP, and you are watching the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. You're watching the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. Now here's your hosts, Tom, Nick, Ryan, and Dave. It's you, it's me, it's N-R-D. It's you, it's me, it's N-R-D. Uh-huh. Let's start the show. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. It is you, it is me, it's King Dave C. And tonight with me on episode triple one of the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast, it's you, it's me, it is the entitled AJP Hailing from Rhode Island. AJP, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast this week. Hey, thank you for having me, man. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Listen, we it is it is not often that we get starstruck on the show. When I say we, I mean me. Um, we've had legends on this show like Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, Buff Bagwell. But tonight we make history as the man who technically main evented night two of the Chris Jericho Rock and Wrestling Rager at sea. Ladies and gentlemen, a rainstorm broke out that not even AEW Jesus could fix on night two. The heavens opened up right after Fozzie. And I tell you, when I we were all very sad, those of us who had been drinking. And all of a sudden, somebody, I think somebody lost like an Apple Watch or something along that line. I don't know if it was you that held it up or the guy that you wrestled that night. And somebody like, I'll wrestle you for that watch. And we're like, get us a referee. And somebody just stepped in. You had this. I, as good of a match as you could on on a slippery boat deck, uh, <laughs> but yeah. So so this was your second cruise, if I if I read your lanyard correct. Yes, it was. So t what was the first one you went on? Was it the third, it was, the triple whammy? It was yes, the triple whammy. Which, okay, so uh, what made you want to go on the cruise the first time? Uh, so I mean, I've always, I can't say always, I. I especially like towards the 2016 end of his career uh Chris Jericho was like a big inspiration for me um and like obviously I went back further than 2016 I, but I mean that's where I really came to appreciate him yeah. and so you know when he went to AEW like I, I don't watch much AEW let me just say that um but like I would always tune in for Chris Jericho's stuff and I mean when I found out he was running a cruise the first time I really wanted to go the second time I really wanted to go and then the third time my father surprised me with it as a gift for I think it, it was supposed to be for my birthday because it was supposed to be in February and then it got pushed yep. back like yep. what was it two times yep so it ended up being in like October of 21 and <laughs> I had the absolute time of my life and like I, I up to this point, I had only been on a plane like twice in my life. So like just that part of the experience alone, like, I mean, at, at this point, I wasn't scared of it anymore. So it was just a good time. And like, um, I, I can't say enough how much fun it was. And, and then the fourth cruise was dramatically better from, uh, uh, from a sense that they could only do so much during the COVID era, really. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, it, I mean, just in how many people there were, it felt like there was twice as many people on that on the second one for me, which was the fourth one. Yeah, I must say I'm I'm a bit jealous because I was originally supposed to go on the triple whammy with my sister. And then obviously COVID happened. We were the responsible people, and we spent our stimulus checks to book that cruise. And like, <laughs> I remember like we were ready to go on like so but like then they pushed it to october for the third one then for whatever reason we couldn't make it that time so we had to we booked for the the four leaf clover and i remember i put in for my vacation request at work and literally about an hour later we've decided to move the cruise to 2023 i'm like are you fucking kidding me i was so <laughs> bummed but it but, actually you know, ended up working out for me because it got moved to my birthday month this time <laughs> Well, there you go. Happy has your birthday passed yet? Yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. Oh well, happy belated birthday, my friend. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, tell it like what were your what was your experience on this year's cruise? Because I know from from my perspective, if because I remember I did the the uh, exit survey that they sent everyone, and it was like, would you recommend this to people? And I've always I've said this since the since the we we did it. It's not a vacation to relax on. There's just so much going on that you can't. You can't sit down and relax. You can't go in the pool. You can't sit down and eat. You're going somewhere all the time. So what was your experience on the cruise? I guess more or less the same. The, the The first time I found that I could relax a lot more, and I mean, part of that was we actually made it to the Bahamas that time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
no, I, I, I had fun. The second time was, I don't want to say frustrating, but more motivating than anything. Like, the day that we had the match in the rain, like, I was specifically upset about, like, man, I want to wrestle on this boat so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was just like, how can I make that happen? And, of course, it hasn't been made to happen or anything but that all came together very nicely um but to get back to the original question i it was motivating but it was also still a lot of fun and in, in a good place for me because like where else do you get the perfect combination of wrestling and rock and roll yeah. like you you it, it you could have people from wwe on the boat that's about the only way you could make it better i suppose <laughs> like it's it's as good as it's gonna get it's pretty it was, it was a very much um it was a freeing and fun experience yeah i i've i compared it to like how wrestlecon is i don't know if you've been fortunate enough to go to wrestlemania yet but so i've, I've been fortunate enough two times when it's uh been in at MetLife stadium and i did wrestlecon like the whole wrestlecon and all that stuff the whole weekend i did nine events in five days and when I tell you I was dead to the world the Wednesday after SmackDown, oh, I think I slept the entire day. And but like again, it's one of those. There's so much going on, you can't sleep or stop to eat or enjoy anything. You just got to keep going. Um, so my number one advice to anybody that goes on this cruise: wear comfortable shoes because you're going to be standing and waiting on a lot of lines. Yes. So, um, but yeah, fortunately, I remember. So I remember. To go back to the match you had in the rain, the main event of night two, um, I remember that breaks out, and as soon as it's over, you yell out your in, your Instagram handle, um, and I remember my sister immediately goes, "Message him when we get back to land." As soon, and I'm like, I mean, I I paid for the Wi-Fi, so it's like, <laughs> let me check out his Instagram right now. <laughs> I got nothing else to do. Uh, <laughs> But no, it's one of those things like you just you never know who's listening, who's watching. Um, and here I got you on a YouTube channel. So, of course, thank you for doing that. <laughs> thank you for having me, man. I was, I'm very excited to do this. I'm glad something came out of that. Exactly. Know? If anything, you got on the Wrestling Nerd broadcast. And I don't know if it was because of your match, but the cruise vlog that we did is the highest viewed video that we've done. It's it's outdrawn Cardona. Myers, Buff Bagwell, uh, my sister, her wedding video that we did on this broadcast, even that, you know. So wow. you, <laughs> you, AJP draws money, ladies and gentlemen. So to any promoters that are out there, he's taking bookings. Just saying. No, I'm not. I don't want to wrestle for you people. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say yeah, I was. <laughs> well, so – Speaking of your wrestling career, tell us how that got started. How long have you been in the uh, in the business and whatnot? What made you want to become a wrestler? So that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> we have the hard hitting stuff here. There are multiple starting points because there's like if my uh, among other things I've compared it to. My wrestling career is a lot like Star Wars. Like there's a lot of really good parts, but they're not canon. <laughs> so. Um, my dad, well, the simple answer is my dad's always had a wrestling company. When I was really little, it was a backyard company. It was made out of mattresses and like wood and like the most dangerous, unsafe garbage you could imagine. But <laughs> that then turned into buying a ring and then certain trained wrestlers get into the mix and then everybody gets better. And then we get a building and, you know, we, we get kicked out of the backyard. We'll say that we've been kicked out of pretty much everywhere we've been because wrestling is not, um, welcome yeah. in a lot of places <laughs> but uh so um as the company's grown i've both literally grown up as a human being and i've also uh grown up as a wrestler i've gotten to watch a lot of now my peers then my mentors well i guess they're still my mentors but more my idols back then like i got to see everything they did right and everything they did wrong and it was just it was a really big learning experience for me and like I talk about how uh Chris Jericho became important to me in 2016 and not sooner than that and a lot of that has to do with I had WWE in my backyard you know I wasn't really watching the TV stuff my earliest memories of WWE wrestling was watching the uh 2006 DX DVD 
<laughs> and just like the worst stuff you could possibly watch at that age. Just, and that's what I got into at the beginning. Triple H was my first favorite wrestler. Um, so I want to say wrestling became like, like everybody's NWO moment, I guess, to compare it to that was CM Punk's pipe bomb for me. Okay. And so like I had been a Cena market up until that point. That whole thing like changed wrestling to me. I was like, "Whoa, wait a minute! CM Punk is like the guy. CM uh, Cena, what's <laughs> what is this? What is wrestling? What is life? <laughs> like my 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 whole perspective of it changed, and it just he really spoke to me in a way that I guess I didn't even appreciate until probably the last two or three years. I'm going back and thinking about it. It's just, um, I uh, to to make it back uh, back about me again <laughs> uh, my dad uh, was running a show and there was these two guys that were having a feud and they would keep one-upping each other like they would take something they would say literally like there was a uh, uh, one of them was barred from ringside so he opened up a bar at ringside like selling <laughs> booze <laughs> and, 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 and brilliant it worked there was a band from ringside to come out playing guitar hero <laughs> That's great. So this week it was, I want that little punk in a no DQ match right now. And <laughs> here comes little AJ Punk dressed like CM Punk, of course. <laughs> the, and and I hated it for so long. But I, I, again, I go back and watch it a lot now because it, it, amaz it, it amazes me to see how many things I got right being an untrained 10 year old in a ring like that I have to think about all the time now to get right like the things I have to try to do now I was doing effortlessly at 10 years old and I'm not saying I was <laughs> the best wrestler in the world by any means but like even then I I, I kind of I'm saying this like it's an out-of-body experience now I kind of showed what I had back then and uh, a couple years after that, I would do some practice shows. Um, nothing that made any kind of air in, in any way. But uh, at some point, I pulled my dad aside and I was like, hey, I kind of want to take this serious a little bit. And I think I was about 13 at the time. Um, that led to a, a, like a short storyline uh, with some carefully planned out matches. <laughs> but again, they were pretty good for at that point an eighth grader like that's unheard of I, yep. I, you, you hear guys like Rey Mysterio and uh, I think there was I, I excuse me for not knowing their name but I believe there's a Japanese female wrestler who also started really young that I can't for the life of me think of their name right now mm -hmm. like but you don't see the footage of that stuff yeah like if I get signed on tv that's the first thing people are gonna find <laughs> you know um and, uh so uh, but Again, and I say there's multiple starting points. Like when it was in a backyard, I would wrestle plush dolls. When it was the CM Punk phase, I was dressed as CM Punk. Then when I started taking it seriously, I became AJ Phoenix, which is what AJP stands for. Um, and that's like I, I started as the you know one of the bad guys. The entitled thing is what I did right from the beginning. It was it being entitled was about it's my dad's company. This will all be mine someday. Oh, that was at its core what it meant. Over the years, it's the definition of being entitled. I mean, the definition of the word itself hasn't changed, but my definition for it and why I'm entitled has grown and changed. Like now at this point, I've been doing this almost 10 years, like seriously, professionally getting better. And I feel like I'm owed something and there you go. Entitled. That's the only word for it. I love it. Um, speaking of entitled, you say you're a WWE fan, so I'm assuming you watched the Elimination Chamber last weekend? Oh, man. Yes, I did. So I, I would like, since you since you mentioned how the pipe bomb is something that really brought you in, um, would, would you say that it's fair to say that this was almost this generation's kind of CM Punk John Cena Money in the Bank 2011 match with Sammy and Roman. How everyone was just in, it, it, you had the perfect, you had the setting, the characters, everything was perfect. My, even my girlfriend 
who I hope does not barge in on this interview because she did last episode is livid over that whole thing. She's she doesn't she never even really watched wrestling before, but now she's got a Sami Zayn shirt. She's just yelling at the TV. Um, what what are your thoughts on on everything going on with Sami Zayn in WWE? You know, I didn't even think to draw that comparison, and it's it's like. I'm almost speechless thinking of it that way, you know, because of how much that CM Punk John Cena match meant to me. Like I was clinging to the TV watching that match. And this one, like, even though I've been doing this as long as I have, and I see wrestling differently because of it, like glued to my phone watching that match. It, It was very, very well done. Like if you notice, like the first five minutes of that match, they didn't move. Yep. They didn't move. They fought over the crowd with facial expressions. That is a level of wrestling that I want to someday attain. Like, you know, that's that's incredible. That's like you said, Cena versus CM Punk. That's The Rock versus Hulk Hogan, even though it wasn't necessarily like a geographical thing. It was more of a, I I guess it was because Hulk Hogan wouldn't have gotten cheered like that anywhere else. Yeah, it's true. But, but again, uh, yes, th- that comparison is 100% accurate. I I, I enjoyed that match very much. Um, I'm probably going to have to go back and watch it again. And I don't really watch matches more than once. So, <laughs> um, yeah, definitely uh, something everybody should watch and learn and just, like, really appreciate. Because Roman Reigns is just – people say he's good, but they don't understand – what they're saying they don't understand the magnitude of how good he is and then the stories come out about how helpful he is behind the scenes like that's what means the most to me like i of course as any other wrestler does i would love to be on wrestlemania someday or whatever the equivalent is at that point like but i want to be remembered as a good person and and i go out of my way to make to put that first over my ego in every situation. And like you are supposed to have an ego to a certain degree. And I guess more or less what I'm saying is Roman Reigns really balances that very well. And I have tremendous, tremendous amounts of respect for him and Sami Zayn as well, because Mm -hmm. he he was the perfect antithesis for, uh, is I say that right? Antithesis. Yeah, I think so. I only went to community college, so (laughs) me too, man. And I dropped (laughs) out. So uh, but yeah, no, Sami Zayn was the perfect, like, he was everything he needed to be in that moment. And like, he was already that before they even got to Montreal. So now you put that in his hometown. A lot of people think he should have won that night. I think everything that needed to happen, happened. I think everything. So. Right down to, I, I wish they had put a little more, they, they, they wish Jey Uso had done a little more, like, I wish there was something that came out of that spear, but at the same time, now I'm going to be waiting for it to happen on TV, and that's awesome. Yep. Um, in a in a in a dream booking scenario, I'm going to put you on the spot here: the bloodline versus the unit. Who wins? <laughs> well, naturally, the bloodline. How do you put yourself over? Way. Okay. I think. Um, Wow. That's well, how I different mean, AJ, of a level Roman Reigns is. AJP, like AJP would like to tell you that the unit would win that match. But I, <laughs> Austin would like to remind you that this is real life and <laughs> this is Roman Reigns and the Usos we're talking about. And I don't think there's any amount of politics in the world that could make that happen. <laughs> Hey, you never know. Wrestling is pretty wild. I don't think anybody, when they saw Johnny Knoxville taking on Sami Zayn, that 10 months later, we would all be emotionally invested behind Sami Zayn, practically crying at our televisions. I so. like to differ just from that, that match with Johnny Knoxville was better than it had any right to be. It, it was. It, co- like, uh, it cost me my loss in the predictions contest we had for the broadcast <laughs> wrestling. Event. And I was very mad. I'm like, they're not going to put Johnny Knoxville over Sami Zayn in this match. Of course they would. <laughs> what do you mean? I was just watching that very bad. So, um, but yeah, so what, what, do you have a list of goals or whatnot? So obviously bloodline versus unit is a, is a dream scenario, but what, what are, would you have a list of goals or bucket list of any sort in your wrestling career? I've always kind of struggled with that because 
I, I, like I said, wrestling, WWE was in my backyard. It wasn't actually WWE, let me say that. But it, it, it's always been there. So it's, it's been something at different points in my life I've taken for granted because it's always been there. And so it's always been hard for me to have, like, tangible goals that I could, like, sit here and list for you. Now that I've now that I've reached a certain point and I've blown my own expectations away and blown other people's expectations away or met them because I I have a really good um what's the word I'm looking for support support system something like that <laughs> I have a really good support system so um what was the point I was trying to make with that I just lost my train of thought what was I just saying <laughs> You were talking about your goals and aspirations. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So, um, my goals. Let me just go back to that before I make the other point. <laughs> um, gosh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's late. We all get it. It's it, part of the reason that I'm losing my train of thought is because this overwhelms me so much <laughs> to think about because I just wrestling's always been so good to me. Again, that's like I've always had pretty much anything I've wanted for one because my dad's a promoter but for two I've always worked hard for it and it people hard work has been appreciated in my experience it's not always the case um but for goals specifically I guess now would be to uh get on some bigger level independent shows I've I've been on fight tv I'm on IWTV regularly like I I've I'm at the mark right now like i need to step up my game as far as like cardio and bodybuilding goes like i i'm not the type of person that thinks they need to you know be shredded but i could definitely afford to hit the gym a little more so once that happens i definitely like to see myself in some bigger matches in some bigger companies but in that one of my bigger goals is to always stay true to where i've come from like I love to believe that no matter where I go, I'll always be able to go home to an RWA show and and have that available to me. My my goals are to one day, re I really do want to run the company. I really do want to let it continue to grow in step with me as I feel as though it has my whole life. And if I get bigger than the company, I want the company to get bigger. And I, I'm not saying that... I, I don't mean to assume too much. I'm not trying to say I'm already about to be bigger than the company. I, I, I don't mean to be pretentious. <laughs> Just um, entitled, that's all. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, you know what? One of my biggest goals for sure is I want to open a school. Because I feel like there's so many good wrestling schools, but there's not enough good environments in those schools like they'll teach you how to wrestle but like you don't see the the i mean you might but you don't really see like what those places do to some people and i don't mean all of them because there are plenty of good ones that i'm not i haven't been to but the ones that i see sometimes uh <laughs> their students they they carry themselves like the preppy kids at school and it's not because they're not as good as they say they are, but it's almost like it, they're too good for us. And it rubs off on the, I don't know how much it, that affects the fans. I've definitely seen our local guys get bigger reactions than them. And it seems to be because of that. But as far as the locker room side goes, like there's been a lot of tension because of, you know, that the way those guys carry themselves. And also, like, um, they aren't wrong for how they see us entirely because at one point we were a backyard company. and We were full of untrained wrestlers that could shouldn't call themselves wrestlers. And now that we're getting to a serious point with it, it we, I'm we're able to take that honest look at it and be like, okay, like, because now there's people below us in that same position, but it's important not to be the people that bullied us for so long. It's just kind of like, leave it alone, let them be. 
I would honest, I would infinitely prefer if wrestling wasn't so easy for everybody to get into because a lot of people are going to have lifelong injuries and possibly ruin their life because of something and not even get more than 50 views on it. Yeah. yeah. But on that same token, you can't save everybody. Kind of not my problem. I'd rather be the good guy. All right. and, and and to go back to me wanting to open a school because I've, I've been going on for a while here. Um, uh, I want to offer an inclusive environment for everybody that isn't pretentious about it. And I want it to be every bit as good as those places, but also be something everybody else, like something to write home about, something to say, like, you know what? I belong here and I want to be here and I want to represent this place. And other people want to come in and represent this place. And of course, I'd like to make a lot of money off of that too, but that's just part of the game. <laughs> uh, uh, as we as we start to wind down here, and uh, I'll give you a sort of pr- plug, whatever you want, in just a couple minutes. Um, it was announced today um, that my local indie fed, uh, Northeast Wrestling, uh, is going to be having WrestleFest on March 11th. And one of the things I'm excited to see is to see Kineske Takeshita. Um, and it was announced that he's going to wrestle your fellow unit member in JT Dunn. Now, I'm just saying... You come on down to to Connecticut. There, it's not that far down a trip down eighty four. Maybe get in the corner of your of your of your unit member. I could talk to Mike Lombardi's promoter, Northeast Wrestling. See what we can do there. Um, so I'm I'm just saying, a, a nice little AJP run in would would make me pop like a, a kernel in the microwave. I'm just saying. So <laughs> I will have to look into that. It's more my options. Just saying, we would love to see you Northeast Wrestling down here. Um, but yeah, so this this has been a lot of fun. Um, so heads up, the episode is going to air this Tuesday. So if you have any bookings or whatnot this weekend, don't bother plugging them. But whatever, the floor is yours. Plug your Instagram, Twitter, whatever you want to plug. The floor is yours, my friend. Well, uh, it's pretty simple. My Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal are all <laughs> entitled AJP. If you want to pay my bills so I can get on TV quicker, I would greatly appreciate it. But if you can't do that, I will take a follow, a like, a subscribe, whatever you can spare. Thank you you very much for having me on your show. Uh, This has been great, sir. We appreciate it. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, we said go follow him on all the platforms of social media. While you're following the entitled AJP, make sure you follow the broadcast on all the platforms of social media. WNRDB, the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast on Facebook. Check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash WNRDB. Buy your official nerd merch, prowrestlingtees.com slash the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. Just put up a uh, St. Patrick's Day shirt. So uh, if you're feeling lucky, rock your uh, green Irish shirt with the nerds on St. Patrick's Day. And of course, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel because we've got over 200 subscribers. We want more. We want to be entitled. We feel like we are earned your subscription by watching this interview today so on behalf of myself and the entitled ajp don't forget to tell your mother you love her every day because like kevin Oran said mom you're the real mvp good night everyone and god Thank bless america it's so it's so it's so i like that hat